Hello, hello, welcome to the show. My name's Terry Minor. This is episode two. Just ramblings, really. Um, I just really quickly wanted to talk about um, multi-story car parks and why in films do they keep using them in chase scenes? Because when you think about it, if not only is it bad that people in movies still think they can outrun cars and somehow pretty much do for about the first five minutes. In fact, I would just like to see a film where they just run the guy over instantly and then the credits roll. Or a horror movie where they just turn on a tap and blood comes out and they go, right, screw this. And just the, their car drives up off of the road. Just credits. But like, why, why are there so many chase scenes in multi-story car parks, it's the best place to be chased, right? Because really, as the guy just keeps going around in his car, you can just hide behind those big plinth, you know, the big strut, the big concrete strut. You could literally do it. You could, like, max before you run out of, oh, well, before, not oxygen, but before you run out of, like, food. Like, before you'd run out of, food or water you could have two days in there he'll run out of petrol or a she they'll run out of petrol before you run out of like literally worst case scenario i'll suck the wee from the stairs you know the old chris packet anything just to keep me you know my sense of self-preservation Wanting to live would be so much that I could literally just, he goes to chase me and I, I just run to the stairs bit, you know, where you pay. And then I just run down one and I hide there. And then he, he comes around and get me. There's nowhere in life better to be chased than a multi-story car park. Hi guys, Shea Spoon here. Oh my god, I'm gonna do one of those online challenges, a Pepsi challenge. I'm gonna put a blindfold on. So it's been midweek fun for all of us and see if I can taste the difference, which is I just love. I uh you? well I'm doing? doing my vlogger blog ring, I'm gonna do the Pepsi challenge. Sorry, sorry. I don't get it. What do you mean? Well what don't you get? It's just a Pepsi you're challenge. On, you've got a coat there. Yeah. But there isn't any Pepsi, so in fact one's lemonade, so you can't do it, so what? sorry. You go in the front room, right? Front here. room, yeah. Listen, you know me, guys. I like to concentrate on positivity, but there's been one person who's... talking about dick pic again, are you? Sorry. In 1976, Nadine, Janine's cousin, from the Isle of Wight came to work at Nathaniel's her bar. As the summer went on, Jeremy fell deep under her spell. Isn't she a wonder, he'd say. She's pretty, I said. Why don't you say something? Ask her out. I can't, he said, for her beauty knows no bounds. What on earth does that mean? Go on, I said. As the summer went on, Jeremy fart ass and piss ball all the time he had away, until eventually the last night came. And with a very drunk encounter around by the back of the bins, she said to him, Why don't you just f me? Really, he said, I was hoping to get your number. Perhaps we could write. No, she said, for I am betrothed to another when I get back home. Tis the way of our people, the Eloites. As Jeremy climbed round the back of her rather crudely, she shouted to him, By the way, if the engine cuts out way before the harbour lights, make sure you pull me ashore. There's nothing worse than a lazy land. Even now, Jeremy sparks up nostalgia and thinks of her often, especially on bin day when the clattering of the truck comes and goes. Oh, Nadine, he says. Blooming heck, I say, Jeremy. Rain it in! Hi, guys. Shay here. Oh, my God. And it's Yomi Anko. I have asked me to be ambassador, to which I'm absolutely hyped. And there's just so many 
no spoons coming, which is just amazing. There's an anti gravity spoon, uh, there's the invisible spoon, it's not actually invisible, it's just glass, but they trump themselves with the anti gravity. But it's all coming and it is amazing. Sometimes it's just like I live in a world of spoons, and sometimes on Spoon Market Day, when I go into Spoon Town and I see this lovely little spoon boy, and he's just there and he's all alone, and there's something about his vulnerability that I can't like, but he just looks at me, and I just know that I fall in love with him for everything. And we spend a crazy spoon summer together, and we just fall in love, and it's all crazy, and it's just, I can't control myself I'm just falling uh, but then I look at him and I realize he's a spoon and he can't love me his heart is a spoon and it's on its side because it's his heart so when I love him my love just falls off like like if you like I don't like I don't like country file now, I'm British, English. I mean, I love the essence of a Sunday night. I like Antiques Roadshow. I like people pretending that they're not interested in how much stuff's worth, you know? Oh, we'll never sell it. Oh, God, we want to know for insurance reasons. Oh. But um, I just, it's what's wrong with, I don't, it's just, it's too much Britain. There's too much Britain in Britain. You know, we need to look, we need shows that show us France or Spain or other places in the world. Why must on Sunday do we all agree to just watch a load of people in North Face gear, the kind of gear that you should be wearing on top of a mountain, just visiting a slate museum in Abergavenny? It's what's wrong with Britain. It's like coast. It's how many times, how many times have you been round the coast? There's nothing new. Show me somewhere else. Oh, and then John, they wheel John Craven out on like a sack barrow, like bloody Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. And he just goes, I like licorice. And then they wheel him off. And then that gingerhead farmer turns up and goes, oh, it wouldn't happen to my farm. Oh, all my sheep have a lovely time as he puts a bolt through their head. Meh, whack. Give it. Shorts on, and yes, I bought them from the market. Don't want no trousers on my knees. Oh, thank you, please. I want these. I feel so free now. I got short shorts on, and my thighs are so exciting, and I got short shorts going on and if you want to see my knees everyone's invited every time Cliff Bob's on his shorts which he bought from the market I get started Ooh, come on let's drink some champagne and let's get a starty on this lower limb party now I got short shorts so exciting and I got short shorts going on and if you want to see my knees everyone's invited I is Barry Bean here, Sean's brother. I've not seen him. I was in the garden a couple of months ago on a Saturday. Just mowing, doing my chores and that. With the fly mow. That thing's forced to advertise. It should just be called a mow. I don't even do that. 
accidentally looked over at fence and I saw next door neighbour's wife sunbathing. She says, do you like what you see? He's away on business in Singapore for two weeks. You can have me if you like. I said, what sort of bloke do you think I am? I'm Barry Bean. And I stormed inside. Later on that night, I'd been down Tesco's Express. I got a Tobler on, I topped up my O2 phone and I was just getting a can of Tesco's on when suddenly I can see in my letterbox, which is right next to the floor, she stuffed a nipple through it. Do you want a glass of rosé with that, she said. Well, my defences were low. I ran over and bang her there and then straight for the letterbox. After the stupor was over, we shared a cigarette to the draft excluder. She dropped a load of ash. I said, mind me carpet. She says, you are. I said, nothing. She says, do you want to do this next Saturday? I said, aye, but make it at eight. You're cutting right into casualty. That's two stories that converge. No idea what's going on. She said, all right then. Saturday after Saturday. We're doing the do through letterbox. In the end, I had to take draft excluders off. Jesus Christ, they were chaffing me something rotten. And then this one Saturday comes around. She doesn't come. Gets to about 10 o'clock. And the secret signal's all wrong at door. I go up to it and bang it nonetheless. Oh, bloody hell. It's a bit rough. I thought I'd taken the draft excluders off. When there was this evil cackle. I threw open the door, and there he stood. It was Dennis, her fella. Ha ha, he said, this is an evil trick. I've locked her in the bathroom. The joke's on you. I said, bloody hell, what are you talking about? What do you think you're doing? He said, I'm not quite sure. I'm horrendously jet-lagged, and I'm very lonely. Bloody hell, I said. I said, do you mind if I come back next Saturday? I said, yeah, but stagger it. Come at ten. And as he went off down the road, I shouted after him, and get her back and sack crack, bloody wax. It's like a conquistador thwacking through the jungle. It's throatless. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm currently on uh, this kind of thing called Twitch. Uh, Friday nights are really big for us. I start at nine o'clock, three hours. We watch retro stuff. We talk rubbish. It's kind of like a podcast. Well, it's like this, really, but you can chat to me. Well, I don't know other things. Well, do. Just have a look. Just Google it. Twitch, how does it work? It's very easy and it's all free. So uh, thank you so much for work. What? <laughs> it's the easiest bit I've said in it. Thank you for watching. I'm on Twitch at nine o'clock tonight. Um, and there'll be more of these next week. I'm going to try and uh, put them up every Friday. Nearly said drop them every Friday, but then my little inner workings of my mind went, no. Lots of love. Have a lovely weekend. Or if you're watching this, not at the weekend, have a lovely time with you and yours.